All right, so let's roll into this together. First part I want to start with is really, what is your business? When we ask the question, what is your business? Uh, some would suggest that your business is simply your database. So what we're going to start our conversation today is around your database. If a doctor or lawyer sells their practice or sells their business, ultimately what they're selling is their database. So we wanna really start with our first slide today and we're gonna look into command and how to do this is, is to start by setting our 2021 goals. So the first thing you wanna consider as you do this, and again, we're gonna come back to this at the end as part of our action plan is having your 2020 numbers ready. The reason you're gonna to wanna to have your 2020 numbers ready is for your conversion rates. And we're gonna look at that in just a moment so you'll see exactly what conversion rates you'll wanna have going into setting your goals inside a command for 2021. Um, you'll also wanna know what your profit goal is, your expenses as a percentage of GCI, and your cost of sales as a, as a percentage of GCI. Just a really quick definition of those terms. Expenses, they happen whether or not a transaction closes. Cost of sales is something that only occurs at a close of a transaction. like a uh, company dollar or paying into your cap, perhaps a referral fee. Could also be you're paying your buyer's agent or seller's agent if you have a team or if you have anyone inside of a transaction receiving a piece of that transaction uh, gross commission income. So let's shift over into command and you'll bear with me as we bounce back and forth between the live environment command and our presentation today. And again, if you have questions, just feel free to pop them in the questions box. Easiest way to set your goals right here in the middle of the screen, right at the top, set yourself up for success by setting your 2021 goals now. And I'll simply click through this, which will open my Kelly guide. We're gonna go rather fast through these various uh, screenshots and through the slides. If you have questions, certainly pop them into the questions box. We'll do our best to hit as many as we can, uh, especially to the end. I'm gonna hit get started and just start walking right through. On the left side is gonna be really the, the boxes that we'll notice that will some changes will happen as we enter our goals on the right-hand side. So we're looking at where are we setting our goals for next year, 2021. Uh, I went ahead and filled out some of these ahead of time. What is your annual profit goal? You'll notice right away we're starting with profit. Just like MREA, just like the Red Book, Millionaire Real Estate Agent Book, it starts with the economic model just after your big why. The reason behind the economic model first is it's really what's your profit goal? What's the profit you are, are shooting for? So when I put in here, I put my profit goal was 250,000 for this example. I put in my expenses were 150,000. I put my cost of sales for 75,000. They were based on the numbers that I have. If you don't have your numbers from last year, perhaps this is your first year in the business. Um, perhaps it's the first time you're really tracking your numbers. You can certainly use 40% as an ideal profit margin. You can use 30% as expenses and 30% is cost of sales. And then you could go on and actually calculate the makeup of your business or you input the makeup of your business from the last 12 months or really from 2020. What percentage were listings? What percentage were buyers? What percentage were leases? What are your average commission per unit? You'll notice in this example that my listings have a higher GCI than my buyers. I didn't have any leases that showed up in my numbers. Uh, for the business makeup, it has to equal 100%. You're happy with that and go to next. And here's our conversion rates. And so we really wanna look at what your conversion rates were in 2020. This is gonna require you to have tracked your numbers. And I know so many of you work with the MAPS coach who's making sure you're tracking your numbers. Uh, for those of you that aren't currently tracking them, this will give you at least some guidelines to go forward. I left the default numbers that are inside of command. So it has leads to contacts, 5%, contacts to appointments set, 5%, 75% appointments set to appointments kept, same with appointments kept to agreements, under contract depending, and last but not least, under contract depending or closed unit. So we have several conversion rates there, meaning I need a big funnel at the top or a big GC at the top to ultimately reach my profit goal at the bottom. I'm happy with that. Save and continue. It's gonna give me a total breakdown of what I just filled out. And now I've got my goals set inside a command. Relatively easy, easy to walk through. How long do you think that would take? Pop in the questions box. How long do you think that would take to actually sit down, go through your numbers from 2020 and actually input them into command? 10 minutes, yeah. Deb, you may be right, it may be 10 minutes. For some of you, it may be a little longer. Maybe you've gotta go gather some of that information. I see 20 minutes. 
Yeah. So if you were to time block 30 minutes, thank you, John. If you're to time block 30 minutes or so, and thank you, Cheryl, uh, would you have enough time to enter it? And I, I think we can all agree, yes, that's more than enough time. So we're going to come back to that towards the end as one of your action steps. Time block 30 minutes this week to actually enter your goals. And yes, a sign of my admin may take even less. So thank you for that comment as well. All right, let's move back hey, into our presentation. Yes, go ahead. Tim, my apologies, but the problem I was having with the, the goal setting, because I was doing it manually actually, was I was having problems with getting to the business makeup and it wasn't showing me that and it wasn't allowing me to go further down. Okay, uh, that, that could have been a, a problem inside of the system at that time. Uh, if you would, could you send me an email? I'll pop my email address into the chat box. Yeah. Um, and I'll be happy to, to help you out with any troubleshooting we can afterwards. That would be okay Thank with you. you. Sorry about that. Absolutely. No. I, see you, I can go through my tech guy. No problem. Thank, thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Sometimes we okay. do experience those kind of challenges. So thank you for oh. bringing it to our attention too. All right. Uh, slide one. We're good. We've got our first step. First step is to, to actually enter your goals. Step two, our second strategy. How healthy is your database? And as a general reminder, I want to remind you of page 188 in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Page 188 gives us the four laws of lead generation. So we, we posed the question in the beginning of your business, what actually is that business? And we suggested that your business is your database. Well, naturally, what, it, what is your database? What do you feed it? What do you do with it? And, and how, how do you determine its current health? So we're gonna look at the health score of your database inside a command based on where you are today. Again, this is just like the first time, uh, maybe you started a health and fitness uh, exploration where you want to get in better shape or you want to be uh, have a healthier lifestyle. The first thing you'll probably do is get a benchmark of where you are today so that you know where you want to ultimately end up. And the way we do that inside a command is by looking at our health score. So I'm going to go back to a live environment. I know for some of you, you've already seen this in the past. And yet it may be a good reminder. We're simply going to click the, the bar graph here on the left hand side, the applet that is reports. And it's going to tell me the health score of my database. And just at a, as a quick snapshot of my current health score, I'll see that, you know, I, I've got a health score of 58.89%. And, and that may be good. It, it may be bad. I could click on compare and I could start to compare to other agents in my market center. I compare to other agents in the state, other are all agents. How about agents in the top production bracket? How am I in comparison to them? And I can look down and see that, you know, I'm doing okay in phone numbers, doing really great in email. I've got some area or some opportunity for improvement in addresses, neighborhoods, home anniversaries, and birthdays. So this may give me an action plan for the first quarter of 2021. And I may simply want to start with, okay, let's find 10 people a day that I can add an address, neighborhood, home anniversary, if I can find that, and their birthday. Or perhaps I utilize uh, a social media platform to find birthdays every single day and add them to my contacts with, of course, dear. So just some strategies around where are we today? What does our actual health score look like? And do we have a healthy business or not? I know there's a couple things popping in the chat box. I want to make sure I miss this as well. Great, getting healthier every day. Fantastic, Cheryl. Yeah, so what we're looking for in that health score is progress. More than anything else, are you moving in a direction that is a healthier and health healthier database? Why? Because that is the health of your business and ultimately that's likely to predict your profitability. Your health score will have a strong correlation to your profitability if you communicate with your contacts in a systematic way, which we're gonna look at in just a moment. All right, let's get back into our slides. All right, so the, the four laws from, uh, from MREA, from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, build a database. Okay, you're doing that by entering contacts. Feed it every day. We're going to talk about maybe what you want to consider to feed that database in addition to contacts. Communicate with it in a systematic way. We're certainly going to look at that with smart plans. And last but not least, service the leads that come your way. So what does your current health score tell you about your database? Third strategy, your contacts. First question, do you have enough contacts to actually hit your goal? So you started by entering your goal for 2021. Are there enough contacts in there to, to hit that goal that you intend to? And for those of you that attended a, a class like business planning clinic uh, or MREA business planning clinic, 
you, you probably know the numbers from MREA that suggest two out of 12 people will lead to a closed transaction. And in some research, maybe the number is even one out of 10 people will lead to a closed transaction, one out of 10 contacts that you stay in contact with in a systematic way. So as you lay out your goals for 2021 and you break down to the number of units that you intend to close, do you have a 10 to one ratio? Do you have at least 10 times that number inside of your contacts today? What other information would you wanna consider feeding your database? What's some other personal information you may want to know? Just pop something in the questions box uh, or in the chat box as to what that could be that would be beneficial. Common interests. Yeah, neighborhoods, tribes, works, kids' names, names, employer. And yeah, the list goes on. Lots and lots of personal things. Uh, I, I had a privilege of working with a client who shared with me uh, pies, favorite pie flavors because she loves to give pies to her client's database and she's used that successfully. So she's got some custom information inside or custom fields in her contacts for the favorite flavor of pie. Birthdays, pets, hobbies, all the things you guys are naming are absolutely things you'd wanna consider. So let's just think about a company uh, where a lot of us tend to shop uh, online, which would be a company like Amazon. Uh, how much information are they gathering? How much insight are they gathering about your shopping habits? How much data are they filling in their database? So if you think like that in terms of your contacts, anything personal that you'd want to be able to, to go back on later and take a look at, you could consider entering into your contacts. Uh, some additional questions, are they branded to me? What do I mean by that? Let's go into to command and see where you can find out who's branded to you. I'm going to go into my contacts and I'm simply going to go to filters. Let me shift over so I'm in my personal contacts. That way it looks like everyone's contacts look like and we're going to go to filters. And I want to see are these contacts branded to me, yes or no? And I can simply filter by those that are branded to me. What does that mean? They've registered my app consumer app and having them on my consumer app and registering my consumer app would be a great way to start 2021. Making sure that, that the consumer app lives on the phones of every single person that's possible inside of your contacts. Um, as we've heard from, uh, from Jason and Josh and Gary, the, the, the coming soon features inside of the consumer experience are going to be extraordinarily important in the way in which we run our business going forward. So now's absolutely the time to have them registered to you or branded to you and, and utilizing your app for their consumer needs. Back into our keynote. Awesome, so are they branded to me? So I can search by no, and then I have a list of individuals. I've filtered individuals that are not, and that may be a reason to reach out. And the script could sound something like, Hey Joe, it's Tim. Um, would you would you want to check out this app that my company's been working on? It's an app that allows you to search for real estate anywhere you are, and you're not going to get five or six phone calls from agents all over the place the moment you click on more information. In fact, the only person that may ever call you would be me. Would you mind taking a look and giving me your feedback on it? And a script like that, or something that's in the words in which you use to communicate with your sphere of influence or your database or you're likely to get some engagement and you're certainly not going to offend anyone. All right, going back, we've got some more things popping in the chat. Make sure not to say anything else. Great. Awesome. Cheryl, thank you for that feedback as well. All right. So step four, moving on to step four and our strategy for smart plans make communication easier. So how many contacts do you have right now on a smart plan? I was in a, a training class at one point uh, and I, I heard something to the effect of if you do something more than once, you should have a system. And I believe that, uh, that Gary Keller was given credit for, for saying that in the session that I was in. And I think smart plans become that communication system. So how many contacts do you have right now on a smart plan? And we can look at a moment to see how many contacts I have on my smart plans. What's your goal? The, the third question that's on here what would be so valuable that if your contacts stopped receiving it, they'd actually beg you to put them back on the list? What is that information that they really want to see? And, and in conversations with agents, 
who are asking their database that question, they're finding that the one of the most important things that consumers are getting from them are simply a monthly neighborhood nurture. Simply information about their existing neighborhood, about what are home prices doing in my neighborhood? Uh, in which way are they trending? Are they going up? Are they going down? Even if they have no intention of selling real estate right now, that's the type of information um, that our databases are asking for as real estate professionals. And, and we really have the unfair advantage by being able to put them on something like a smart plan. So let's look at smart plans just for a moment and see, well, how many people do I have on a smart plan right now? We looked at the health score in my database already. Now let's use this little trick to look at the various applets names and click on smart plans. And we'll look at the number of smart plans that I have currently going. And I can start to see that, wow, I've got a lot of smart plans, but I don't have a whole lot of people on them. So look at my contacts. I, I don't have hardly anybody on any of my smart plans. I keep going. I've, I have an opportunity here to add some contacts to some of these existing smart plans. It isn't until I get down to my birthday smart plan that I've got contacts that are actively getting a touch from me. What's so fascinating is I happen to be one of those touches. So a great best practice, put yourself on a smart plan. So if you're sending your smart plan out to your sphere of influence, out to your contacts, are you also receiving those same steps? Are you getting the same steps so that you can experience what your clients are experiencing? So actual story that happened uh, I, a few weeks ago, I get a text message wishing me a happy birthday and I didn't have the number in my phone. And then I realized I had texted myself because of a smart plan wishing myself a happy birthday, which was quite interesting. So even though I wasn't on the smart plans of a whole lot of other individuals that had my birthday in their contacts, and maybe I have an opportunity inside of my own database to enter more people into, uh, into a smart plan like that, how nice of a touch is it when that is automated for you? So very much a set it and forget it or set it and, and monitor it along the way to make sure that you're, you're touching your, your contacts on a regular basis. As we remember from MREA, 33 touch program. Or if you've been through business planning clinic, a 36 touch program. Or if you shop at Amazon, a thousand touch program that they have all of us on as customers where we get on average somewhere between two and three touches per day, as long as it's something of value. Moving back. So now that you have some ideas around smart plans, our fifth strategy we're gonna look at today is our opportunities. And we're looking at opportunities maybe in our session today differently than you have in the past. So I want you to think of contacts as the personal relationship. That's the personal information you wanna put in there. That's the kids' names, pets' names. Uh, you may wanna use custom tags for, for their favorite uh, pie, their favorite whatever they have, their dog lovers, their cat lovers, anything like that in, inside of contacts. Opportunities becomes really the professional relationship. So many teams have decided that, that when a contact is within 12 months, of buying or selling real estate, they're creating an opportunity. And they're actually putting them in the cultivate phase of opportunities. So at any given time, they could log in, take a look at their opportunity and see, well, how many people do I have right now? How many future clients do I have right now that are in my cultivate stage that I'm touching on a professional relationship? And our professional relationship may be a little different than a personal relationship. I may want to utilize things like opportunity tags for first time home buyers, for investor, for cash buyer, for luxury, for commercial, for anything else that you may use that would be different than what you'd enter into a contact. What are some other ways in which you're utilizing opportunity tags? Pop into the chat box other things that you're utilizing for opportunity tags. Empty nester. Really great one. What is an opportunity tag? Tony, thank you for that. What's an opportunity tag? So opportunity tag is similar to a contact custom tag. Where now I'm tagging my opportunities from a business relationship. So rather than just talk about it, let's look at it. The great part about doing these sessions over Zoom. So let's go into opportunities, which looks like a handshake. 
and it's going to load up my pipeline and I'm going to go into personal for a second and I'm just going to choose a, a random contact that's in here and see if we have somebody inevitably we're going to get one with a tag all right so let's go to our to our cultivate stage and we'll see that I have this luxury test buyer here is my tag that I added inside of opportunities go to view details I can see that I've created this contact, this fictitious contact I brought in for my contacts and I've created an opportunity, put them into a cultivate stage, uh, cultivate phase into my thank you referral stage that I've created. And then I have this, uh, I have this custom tag of luxury. How I did that, editing the contact is one way to do this. Um, and I can actually go in and I can create my custom tags and I can add them to other custom tags. We're gonna add other custom tags to this to this particular opportunity. I can pick multiple, so maybe this is an open house contact as well. Click save, and now I've got my, my business tags as part of this business relationship that I'm cultivating. Um, we've heard from, from uh, many leaders that we may not have a lead generation problem as much as we have a lead conversion problem or a lead follow-up problem. And you may wanna look at your at your opportunities today, log into your command. If you're not already in there, take a look at opportunities. And do you have enough people in cultivate stage right now to hit your 2021 goals? And that, that would mean that hundred percent of the people inside of cultivate actually bought or sold real estate. Would you hit your goals? And based on your current conversion rates and based on your conversion rates for the last 12 months, I don't know anybody that has hundred percent conversion rate um, unless you only have one person who's closed one transaction. So if your goal is bigger than that, make sure that you have enough people in there. And I'm seeing some, some things in there popping that uh, I don't have enough. That's great. There's an opportunity for your lead generation to make sure that you're bringing people in from contacts and creating that business relationship inside of opportunities. Any questions on that? I'm getting some things that are popping in. Uh, great. So question, we will need to create again, the tags after we create the contact with the tag. So, uh, at that point, so once you've created this tag, you can add it to any other opportunity. Don't need to recreate it every single time. Um, and the tags that you're creating inside of contacts are different than the tags you're creating inside of opportunities. All right, let's go back into some other strategies today. So you can customize opportunities as well to run your business in the way that, that you like to run your business. I mean that if you've got this fantastic checklist that you follow from the time that somebody raises their hand and says, I'm looking to buy or sell real estate and you follow up in a certain way, you can utilize custom stages and custom checklists inside of opportunities to run the business in the way in which you already run your business. So suddenly command becomes so much more than a CRM. It really becomes this platform that allows you to, to check in on the health score, allows you to set your goals and check in on your goals. It allows you to find out how many contacts I have and what information I'm collecting on those contacts. Let's me see how many people on a constant drip campaign or a smart plan. And then lastly, for what we're covering here today, um, I can start to predict my income by the number of opportunities that I've created for both buyers and sellers and the last thing for leases as well. So I can create those opportunities and put them in the cultivate stage, thereby predicting the profitability or the income that my business is going to actually generate in the next 12 months, utilizing these strategies that we looked at today. Your action steps. So here are your action steps. Time block 30 minutes this week to enter your 2021 goals into command. And if you have a MAPS coach, share them with your coach as well. Um, if you have a mentor, if you have a team leader that you're working with, Share your goals with as many people as you can so that you'll have additional accountability. Second, check your current health score. Where are you today? Just like, uh, just like doing a fitness test to see where you are today so you know where you, need to, where you ultimately want to go, check in on your current health score. Third, contacts that are 12 months or less from buying or selling should absolutely have an opportunity and they should be in at least the cultivate stage, if not the appointment stage and beyond. So making sure that when they raise their hand and saying, I'm looking to buy or sell real estate here in the next 12 months, and you get to be that agent of choice, you, they're in your cultivate stage, you're following up with them on your action plan of, or your follow-up plan. And then number four, remember page 188 from MREA, 
the four laws of lead generation and actually follow those four laws. Feed your database useful information. Make sure you're contacting individuals in your database. You're servicing the leads that come out of that all from page 188. All right, our last page on here today is really easy. Well, number one, um, we do a weekly program just like this. It's 49 a month uh, investment. It's ongoing in partnership with our enablement team where we cover best practices, how to utilize command. Uh, sometimes we touch on coming soon features. You can find that on mapscoaching.com backslash group. Yet what questions do you have that maybe we can cover today while we're here together in the next couple minutes? All right, so some questions that are in the chat box. Strategy behind different tags for contacts and opportunities. All right, Jan, you're, I'm going back as far as I can see. So uh, different strategies behind tags for contacts versus opportunities. I'm um, thinking of that because the business relationship and the personal relationship may be different. Another way to think of that, if I have an investor, I may have some information that I'm collecting on them personally, and yet I may have different uh, opportunity tags that I'd want to apply for the various opportunities that that investor may be buying or selling. So maybe I'd want to tag like uh, first purchase, second purchase, cash, financing, and all those things would be different even though it's the same person, if that makes sense. Maybe they bought the first property with cash, second one they're buying with financing, the third they're buying uh, with some unique financing, with hard money or something like that. Hope that makes sense. All right, so some other questions. Awesome. Can I see the first slide again? Yeah, we can definitely cover that. Let me go back to the first slide. That's the easiest question I should be able to accomplish. Five strategies to take command of your business, yet I assume the strategy you really wanted to see was this one. Looking at a profitability of 40%, expenses at 30%, and cost of sales of approximately 30%. And you'll notice 40% or more as a profit goal, uh, approximately 30% expenses. And of course that can be much less. Your cost of sales approximately 30% and certainly that can be much less as well. Yet maximizing your profit goal and starting with profit first before you get new expenses and cost of sales. All right, great. A couple other questions in here, Sam. Thank you for the, for the kind words. Awesome, lots of questions coming in. You guys are a great group. You don't have a ton of uh, specific questions. I said that I would pop my email address in here and I will in case there are other questions that I can answer for you. If there's anything at all I can do for you, um, certainly reach out. Um, we appreciate you taking some time out to jump on here with us. Uh, certainly taking some time to, to get and really take control and take command of your database, of your business. Make sure that I'm not missing any other questions that are in here. When requesting new agent referrals, what's a good goal to reach for in terms of number? Okay, so if you're a new agent, Allison, and, and help make sure I'm, I'm understanding this correctly, what's a good goal to reach for in terms of a number for new agent referrals? So how many referrals do you want to attract over the course of the year? I, I believe that's the question that you're asking. What's a good goal? I'd go back to your profitability goal. How much, uh, what's profit do you want your business to generate this year? And then what percentage of that do you want to come from referrals? Any of these can be a source if you focus on it. Just like for some of us, profit share has been a source of our business. Yeah, we're not talking about profit share, it's not a profit share session that we're looking at today inside of command, yet that's been a focus for some individuals and as a result, added some profitability to their lives. Can you post a link again for the class? And yes, Jody, thank you for the, the taxes. Taxes are not in that calculator. So certainly talk to your tax professional about that. Uh, best place to go, there you go. There's a link for logging in. Uh, I'm sorry, if you wanna register for our ongoing group coaching program. All right, email address one more time. I'll pop in there as well. Lots of questions coming in and I appreciate all of those. Um, you're gonna notice for those of you that, that make the investment Map site still currently says $79 a month. It is changing to $49 a month starting January 1st, which is why the discrepancy between the two areas. So certainly wanted to point that out uh, to anyone that's on here. Uh, if you have other questions that you have that I can answer on a one-off scenario, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to address those things. Again, thank you for your time today. Uh, it's an absolute privilege 
to, to get to spend some time together with you here. I hope you got some value out of it. If you have feedback in general you want to send my way, feel free as well. I'm always open to getting better uh, and learning better together. So I appreciate all of you. I'm uh, looking forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, everyone.